Welcome back everyone to Numinosophy Academy. I'm Lewis. Today I'm jumping on the Saints Unscripted channel in order to respond to their video on the whole DNA evidence meets the Book of Mormon. I can't see how this can be anything other than, you know, obfuscation, obfuscation, obfuscation. Conclusion, there is no evidence, but I guess we will see. As always, if you enjoy this content, please do like this video for the YouTube algorithm. And we will begin. The title is, Does DNA Evidence Prove the Book of Mormon is False? Okay, people, put on your seatbelts because we're about to embark on a complicated journey through the world of population genetics as we explore what DNA evidence has to say about the historicity of the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Here's the deal. The Book of Mormon tells the story of a family from ancient Jerusalem that crossed the ocean and colonized somewhere in the Western Hemisphere where they started an entire civilization. With that as a foundation, the church has taught for a long time that many Native Americans were naturally descendants of that family. So from a genetic perspective, you'd think that some portion of Native Americans should have heritage in the Middle East. Okay, so that's already, you know, starting off on the, the wrong foot, starting off seeking to muddy the water. You know, there has been a shift in the narrative within the LDS Church. It was predominantly the view that all Native Americans were descendants of those tribes that came over from Israel, the, the Lemanites, the, the Nephites, and, and so on. Um, but over time, you know, as uh, contrary evidence has mounted, they have shifted towards this, you know, limited geographical model, you know, where there's already other uh, natives here um, in the United States. That makes sense to me. And here's where things get sticky for a lot of people. DNA research on Native American origins shows that their ancestry is largely Asian, not Middle Eastern. Largely. <laughs> understatement, uh, all, all DNA evidence um, that we have found so far suggests that um, the, the natives in America, in all of the Americas, North and South, all, you know, connect to uh, Asia, Northeast Asia, etc. No Europe, no Africa, no Middle Eastern, certainly, all Asia. To a lot of CSI fans, that's all the evidence they'd need to cause them to chuck their Book of Mormon out the window. But he doesn't understand how evidence works. But you know what? He will. But I'm afraid it's not nearly that simple. It's important to separate the research from our assumptions about the research. The re our assumptions. Okay, so again, this kind of falls back on God of the Gaps type arguments. So if you come at this, with your presuppositions already in play that, you know, what the Book of Mormon claims to be true is true, um, that these uh, tribes of Israel really did, you know, sometime um, whenever, you know, come across uh, an ocean and arrive either in North America or in, you know, Central America or wherever you want to place this thing, then it's not a case of, you know, showing that the DNA points to that, all you have to do is show that it's not impossible for the DNA to not point towards that. And that therefore leaves a little gap, not a God of the gaps in this case, but rather a, you know, Lemanite of the gaps. Research says that Native Americans, at least whatever sample they drew from, have heritage in Asia, and I'm not disputing that. The assumption critics pull from that is therefore Lehi isn't real and the Book of Mormon is false. Here are just a few reasons why that's not a safe assumption you can make. First, the Book of Mormon only tells the story and history of Lehi's family and descendants, but it does not say that Lehi's people were the only people in the Western Hemisphere, or the first people, or the largest group of people. In fact, the Book of Mormon also tells the story of two other migrations, and science indicates there were obviously others as well. And no matter what assumptions people, even church leaders, made about this in the past, the idea that there were other people in the Western Hemisphere when Lehi arrived 
is totally consistent with the text of the Book of Mormon. Consistent meaning that it doesn't state categorically that that's not the case. However, Joshua Smith himself assumed that was the case, that these four tribes that made their way over from the Middle East were the only people to have ever come to the Americas, i.e., you know, it takes the, the kind of creation narratives as literally true. You know, the Book of Mormon assumes that. And therefore, you know, you have Adam and Eve. You have, you know, all the kind of content of Genesis. You eventually have the flood, right? And the flood, of course, you know, wipes out the inhabitants of everyone on the earth, i.e. the Americas are empty. And then eventually these tribes of Israel make their way to the promised land, this you know, blank canvas upon which they can, you know, realize their own destiny, create the empires that we can read about in the Book of Mormon. In fact, one could say that the population growth described in the Book of Mormon necessitates the presence of other people. So that's one factor to consider. It's not a problem that DNA from other parts of the world show up because people from other parts of the world were there. But then, where the heck did the Middle Eastern DNA go? DNA doesn't just disappear. Well, actually, due to a few different factors, it can. Changes in a gene pool over time is known as genetic drift. There are generally two main kinds of genetic drift. First, there's the founder effect. So imagine you've got a bag of Skittles, okay? You've got several different genetic profiles in there, red, green, yellow, blue, etc. You dump out a couple of Skittles, these Skittles then migrate to a new land to start their own Skittle civilization. But wait. Coincidentally, they both happen to be green Skittles, which means all their descendants are going to be green Skittles as well, which is not at all representative of the Skittles they came from. So one of the problems with saying that there's no... So, you know, this kind of, this kind of thing is pseudoscientific, right? I mean, no, you know, DNA scientists, um, no geneticists that, that look at this stuff agree with the LDS church, right? So, so you're kind of, um, you know, picking and choosing what in, um, you know, genetic research um, leaves a space open. You know, it's very similar, actually, to, uh, like, six-day creationists. So you have the conclusion already in play, and you need um, not to prove that that is what happens. You just have to show that, that it's possible, you know, that, that, that the, the evidence that we do have doesn't contradict that outcome. Of course it does, but you just have to be able to create a narrative which, you know, convincingly implies that that outcome is not impossible. No Israelite DNA in Native American populations is that we don't know what DNA we should be looking for, and Lehi and Sariah's DNA may not be representative of so-called Israelite DNA. That's the founder effect. The second factor contributing to genetic drift is called population bottleneck. Essentially, this is when a catastrophic event simply wipes out DNA profiles altogether. So in our Skittles example, now we're in the Americas and we've got Lehi and his greens along with all these other Skittles. Unfortunately, your great aunt Deborah discovers the bag of Skittles and eats almost all of them. Only a few are left in the bag, but they're reds and yellows. Blue and green were all devoured. Can you think of any examples of the bottleneck effect in Native American history? How about when Europeans arrived, bringing along smallpox and wiping out up to 95% of the population? Or the many bloody battles between Native Americans and the European colonizers? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah cool. If you want to hear it from people smarter than me, read these quotes. On top of that, we read in the Book of Mormon about cataclysmic natural disasters. So what all this amounts to is basically just a kind of convoluted way of saying, yeah, there's no evidence. But that's okay, guys. There's no evidence. But, but, but don't lose your faith. It's fine. But yeah, there's no evidence. You see, the problem is that um, it's not just this one piece of evidence, right? Like, you need to think about archaeological evidence, anthropological evidence... Um, you know, the language evidence, you know, is there any uh, evidence that there is um, Jewish or, or Hebrew um, literary influences in Native American language? No, there isn't. Now, if you had one of those pieces, then it would draw into question the legitimacy of this other piece, right? So say we had, you know, the ruins of a Lamanite city, 
or say there was, um, you know, irrefutable evidence that the, you know, the language of some Native American tribe clearly had its roots in Israel. Well, then that would cause us to, you know, it would throw into question the DNA evidence, right? It would need, it would make us have to look at all that again. But the problem is when you line up all these different strands of evidence, they all point to the same thing, that there is no evidence that what the Book of Mormon claims is true. Rather, you know, as I've said in previous videos, all the evidence points to the fact that the Book of Mormon is a 19th century creation, you know, and, you know, that's my bias coming through, I suppose you could say. You know, I'm basically on board with, um, you know, Dan Vogel's pious fraud, you know, theory, and that obviously places the Book of Mormon squarely in the 19th century. So, make of that what you will. ...and massive wars that took countless lives. In Mormon 8, the Lamanites have hunted my people, the Nephites, down from city to city and from place to place, even until they are no more, and great has been their fall. And behold, also the Lamanites are at war one with another, and the whole face of this land is one continual round of murder and bloodshed, and no one knoweth the end of the war. Now, a population bottleneck doesn't necessarily mean there are no descendants of these people left. It just means the genetic evidence is gone, phased out, or diluted. And that can be true regardless of what genetic marker you're trying to find. Geneticist Hugo Perego said it best, Population genetics is a fascinating field with the objective of providing glimpses in the remote past, but it is a complicated discipline with several limitations, and the conclusions are limited to the data that could be gathered and analyzed, leaving plenty of room for additional studies and perhaps more accurate results. There are perfectly reasonable scientific reasons for why Middle Eastern DNA doesn't show up in modern Native Americans. So it's funny, they kind of, um, you know, they need it to be both ways, right? They want to be able to claim that, you know, certain faithful Mormons have, you know, Lamanites in their ancestry, while at the same time needing to recognize the fact that there's absolutely no DNA evidence, DNA evidence to back that up. It's interesting to compare the kind of... Um, the move the LDS church has, has gone on and compare that to the R LDS church, the, the reorganized um, LDS church, or as it's called today, the community of Christ. Um, they have gone through a similar shift, but they're just further along. So, you know, the initial belief was that all Native Americans were descendants of the Nephites, the Lamanites, etc. Um, and then you move towards this limited geography model um, which is where, you know, in which, you know, there are other Native American populations and basically the, the DNA, the, the archaeological evidence, the, the, the linguistic connections, all of that has just been swamped by the, the other Native American populations to the point where there's now no trace. Or the third option is, of course, that it just is a product of the 19th century. And, you know, you, you can then kind of stick with, you can still kind of hold on to the spirituality. You can say that it's still inspired uh, and that it still, you know, contains spiritual truths. You know, the Joseph Smith is a prophet, etc. You can still hold all of that and make that move. So that's basically, you know, the RLDS church is already, for the most part, on that third step of recognizing that it is a 19th century document. And the LDS church is more or less still here you know, the limited geography model. Although there are some people within the LDS church and some um, scholars even within the LDS church that are starting to kind of point towards the fact that, you know, we really are going to have to end up here eventually. In fact, this kind of scenario has happened before. I'll put a link in the description to a case described in The Guardian where historians agreed that Africans lived in ancient Roman Britain but their DNA is absent in modern Great Britain. The author goes over the same stuff we've just been over and even more factors we haven't been able to get to. At this point, DNA evidence simply cannot disprove or prove the historicity of the Book of Mormon. If anyone tries to tell you differently in either direction, be very skeptical. Now, I'm not a geneticist, but if you want to hear a population geneticist give you the long version of what I just said, check out the links in the description and have a great day. 
Okay, well, there you go, everyone. Um, I'm also not a geneticist, but if you do want to uh, hear a slightly more credible uh, explanation of this entire subject, there was an interview that uh, John DeLynn da did on Mormon Stories with um, Thomas Murphy, uh, which I would recommend. I will link it in the description for anyone that wants to um, delve into this topic more deeply. Thanks for watching everyone. Please do like this video, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future upcoming videos. Thanks in particular to my uh, Patreon supporters. Cheers again, and I will see you in the next one.